Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. My name is Charles. In this video, we're going to take a look at Umodeler and how to use the follow tool. So the follow tool gives you the ability to take a shape and allow that shape to follow along a path. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so the first thing we'll go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and delete this cube here. And uh, the first thing you're probably thinking, well, what do we want to do? So we want to create a shape. So the first thing I'll do is go ahead and create a shape. And I'll create a shape by selecting the line tool. And I'll go ahead and select force close so that that will close up once I'm done with the shape. All right, and I'll go ahead and line this up here. And uh, let's see, I'll go ahead and go in the top view. And let's go ahead and make a shape. So I'll make something uh, interesting, maybe something like this. And I'll just kind of go down here, maybe down at an angle. I'll go past this point. Click. Uh, I won't go there. Maybe I'll just kind of go like this. Click here here and go there so we'll just go ahead and close that up all right great and then i'll hit escape to break out of that all right great so that doesn't look terrible that's an interesting shape maybe it looks like a could be like a sci-fi do uh, door or handle or i don't know anything so let's go ahead and rotate this so i'm going to go ahead and center this uh here and i'm going to rotate it on the pivot point there all right and let's go ahead and try that again All right, I think that's good enough. All right, great. All right, so now we have a object here and it is a shape. Not the most interesting shape, but it will serve the purpose. So while the shape is selected, what I wanna do now is go ahead and create a line to follow. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the line tool and I'm going to go in an overhead view and I'm gonna just start clicking right from this point here. So I'm going to click here, maybe create a wall here, do this, and I'll end it right there. All right. And that looks kind of big, so that's fine. And so instead of force close, what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn it off and then I'm going to hit confirm. And so now we have just a simple line. All right. Great. And the great thing about this line is that that line should be part of this object here. And that's the key here that the line you have should be selected with the object. All right, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and select the face tool. And you wanna first select the object that you want to follow along the path. And then we're gonna hold down shift select, and then you're gonna select the line itself. And then all you have to do is head over to your modeler tool and click on follow tool. And there you have it. And so now you have a object or a shape that followed along the path that you created. And so you have a nice little wall there. It's very useful. Um, yeah. All right. Great. All right. So let's look at another use case of using this here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that like so. All right. And so I'll create another shape. But this time what I'll do is I have some empty objects in the scene. So I'll go ahead and delete those. And then I think I have another empty object in the scene here. I'll delete that one and another one. Great. All right. So I just have those, this one object, you model our object here created from the shape. And that's really nice. All right. So what if we wanted to do some stairs or something like that? So what I'm going to do is deselect that. I'm going to go to you modeler and I'm going to create some stairs. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go in here and I'll create some stairs. All right. So let's do something like this and we can mess with the stairs and whatnot. Um, I don't want to do that. So what I'll do is click off. I'll delete what I did and just start over and create some stairs. So I'll do this. Great. And we can play with this again. I'll maybe do seven. We can change the depth if we want. We can do five. And we can change the height. We can also change the rise. Uh, let's see here. Something like 
maybe like that that'll work just fine all right great so we do a 0.25 try to keep these numbers basic two and uh maybe eight yeah something like that all right so that looks pretty good all right so next let's go ahead and we can reverse it we can do a wide step towards reverse so it's pointing that way um, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it like this all right and then I'm gonna hit confirm so now we have some stairs here all right and I'm not sure what that is but all right so we have some stairs so how would we utilize these stairs if we wanted to create a path a more interesting set of stairs so what we can do is we could take the stairs and just delete all the faces that's one way to do it we can just literally hit all the delete and so now we have this here and so we then can kind of do what we did here with the um, with this wall so we could with the stairs selected you want to just go ahead and I'm, what I'm gonna do first before I even do that I'm gonna go ahead and center on the bottom center just like that and then with the stairs selected I'll go ahead and create a line uh, line tool and let's go ahead and do something so I'll just go ahead and click somewhere around here and then I'll just kind of create something somewhat interesting something that would take a while to try to model if you were like actually having some trying to use a bunch of stairs so say if you wanted to put a bunch of stairs along the edge of some building or something that would take a while so this may be quicker so now we have a line and we have our stairs so I'm gonna go ahead and select the stairs and then I'm gonna select the face and then I'm going to select the actual polygon that line and then we're gonna go ahead and select follow tool and there you have it so now we have some stairs and that's a pretty nice quick way to go ahead and do stairs okay um, if we want to do something else, we can also, I'm going to do the same thing again, so another set of stairs. So I'll go ahead and do another set. I'll create another stairway. All right. And say, for instance, you didn't delete the faces and you just have the stairs, and that's fine. And say we want a circular set of stairs. So what you would do is the next... Um, I'm going to go ahead and create maybe a a disk tool. Use the disk tool to create a circle maybe. But remember, make sure you have this selected. Now, I'm going to do it a couple different ways for you. So, for instance, I'm going to go ahead and make this circle. All right. And now when I hit this object, they're both selected, and that's great. And so what I'm going to do here is select the face tool. I'm going to select this face here. And then I'm going to select this circle and then I'm going to hit follow. As you can see, it created that for us there. Now, of course, we still have um, that object there overlapping. And so we don't want that necessarily. That's kind of kind of cool, kind of looks kind of nice. Um, but maybe that just wasn't your intention um, on how that would work so you would have to kind of move that out the way or do something else um, but you can kind of work with it now that you understand kind of how to use the follow tool so what i'm going to do is go ahead and back out of that now what i'm going to do is delete this circle now now before what i would tell you to do is make sure that when you have your umodeler object you make sure it's selected and then create the circle tool. But instead, what if you had a separate tool, a separate object? So for instance, I'm gonna do the circle tool as a separate object, just like so. And so now these are two separate pieces, right? And so if you try to select the face and then try to select the circle, you won't be able to do that. And um, which is why I was telling you, make sure that you, you know, have that selected. But it's not always necessary because what you can do is select this object and then select the object you want to go to and just do a group, combine the objects. So now they're just combined and you can literally do the same thing. So now when I hit the face tool, 
I'll go ahead and select that face there and then I'll select the circle there and then go ahead and do that follow tool and we should have the similar outcome as well. So that's a nice um, way to approach it. All right, cool. And as you can see, it's kind of messing up because um, I was moving it while I believe the grid was in place. So I'm going to go ahead and try to back that out. And then I'll just go none. And then I'll just move it because that's going to be selected and see a lot. It's a lot of polygons. So there you go. All right, cool. So that's kind of how you can kind of move that out of the way. And as long as all of those polygons are selected. And as you can see, it took that face and turned it into this. And it's a really neat tool. Um, it creates a lot of faces. And so, you know, you just got to be wary or, you know, what you're trying to make and what's necessary and whatnot. And you can take this object just like any object and you can center it here. And now we, you know, we kind of center it or you can recreate a new pivot for it. Uh, whatever you choose to do, um, we can scale it if, if we need to. Now, of course, that's still selected part of that. So if you want, you could actually select those faces and actually delete those faces. So now you just have that. And so if we hit the center tool, it should center it on this object by itself. Cool. So I hope that wasn't too hard. Um, remember, just keep asking questions. And if you have any questions about how a tool works and anything, whether it's Umar or Game Creator or anything Unity, um, if I don't know, ask around and just keep asking questions. Um, but above all else, never give up and keep moving forward. Peace.